Hello, my name is Chris, and I'm EdTech Hub's focal point for data for decision making, and I also lead EdTech Hub's portfolio in Sierra Leone alongside my colleague Iman. Hi, my name is Iman, and as Chris mentioned, together we lead the EdTech Hub Sierra Leone portfolio. As part of our work at EdTech Hub, we look at how data can be used for decision making. In particular, we look at how education data can be used. We define education data as any information that relates to an education system. So this can range from data on individual students, teachers and schools to learning outcomes. Today, we want to tell you a little bit about the education data ecosystem in Sierra Leone. Despite the challenges in Sierra Leone over the years, such as school closures due to the Civil War, Ebola and more recently COVID, the country has come a long way in terms of their data collection and use. Now, more than ever, there is a focus on data-driven decision-making, particularly in education. So now I'll hand over to Chris to answer our first question. And this is a really great place to start. And before I begin, I really should emphasize that the data landscape is an incredibly exciting space in Sierra Leone. And over the past few years, the government's prioritized the use of data for decision-making across major education reform programs and more importantly, they've also made investments that are commensurate with this vision. So for example, uh, today, Sierra Leone is one of the first countries in Africa to have a fully digitized um, annual school census. And this collects uh, data on enrollment, on facilities and more. And actually as of this month, uh, the general public can download an Android app uh, to basically see analysis from the past six school censuses um, to support engagement with the broader decision-making process. Yet, despite all of these investments, um, some challenges still remain. And for me, and based on my experience in Sierra Leone, um, the, the, one of the most important, one of the most critical challenges um, is been the uh, development and the proliferation of many different systems that's effectively led to significant duplication and significant fragmentation. So recently, Iman and I, we, um, mapped the education data ecosystem in Sierra Leone, and we identified 17 different data collection and data management systems and tools. And out of these 17 different systems, nine collect information on the background of teachers. So now if you can imagine that you are the chair of the Teaching Service Commission, or you're the Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education, and you need information on the experience or maybe the qualifications of teachers, you could be in a situation where you find that you have multiple data sources that are telling very different stories. At the same time, the government is actively looking and taking steps to tackle um, this challenge. And I'm going to hand over a man who's going to walk you through uh, some of the principles that the government's looking at applying and doing so. Thanks, Chris. It's so important to have principles that everyone agrees on when improving a data system to make sure that all the users are getting what they need out of this system. So here for this question, I want to highlight five principles that the government should follow when improving their data system to help create a more unified system. The first principle is that having a unified system doesn't mean that there only has to be one data collection tool or a single data dashboard. As long as everyone is using the same key information and identifiers and all the data can be linked to the core database, this will create a system that provides a single source of truth. So when talking about a unified system, the aim is for the system to be compatible with different forms and sources of data with integration across the whole system. This makes it possible to use the data in the most effective way, as all the information decision makers need will be in one place. The second principle is ensuring that the intended use of the data is clear before the actual collection. It's really important to avoid the repetition of data and the duplication of data collection requests. So from here, all the data that is being collected will actually be utilized. The third principle is the importance of collecting quality data. Every time data is collected, it needs to be quality data with prioritization preferred over quantity. If the key indicators are agreed on prior to collection, then unnecessary data collection can be minimized. So now with that in mind, the fourth principle looks at the aims of data collection. The main aim of the data collection should not be extractive or be used to punish people. It should be used to support the work in the education sector. Decision makers, whether they be school principals or those in the ministry headquarters, should see data as helpful for their work. 
So for example, collecting data on teacher attendance can allow school leaders to track their teachers and then hold them accountable for their absences. This data can also be used by the Ministry and the Teaching Service Commission to monitor teachers and ensure that teachers who are put on the government payroll are actually taking up their posts and staying there. So here, data collectors at all levels should be encouraged to also be the data users. And the final principle I want to highlight is the need for the data system to be context appropriate. Sierra Leone is a unique place with a unique education landscape and unique needs. Any unified data system that is built needs to be built with these needs in mind. So for example, we need to ensure the system can work offline as well as online due to the limited internet services in the country. With these principles, the government can begin to build a long lasting and country appropriate data system that will give decision makers the evidence that they need. So now over to Chris to talk about how the government and their partners have begun the, have begun the process of unifying the education data system. Thanks, man. And this is a really timely question as at the moment at EdTech Hub, we're working with Fab Inc and the UK aid funded Lady Lamb program to see how we can get different data systems to talk to each other. And here, um, at first, we were initially focusing on two systems. So there's the annual school census, which I mentioned previously. And then there's a Tangerine data collection app, which Lewi Lan um, has set up. So um, the annual school census collects data from all schools once per year. And this information um, can include the information on the number and the background of teachers, student enrollment, school conditions, school finances, and really anything that you can imagine to do with this running and operation of a school. At the same time, Lady Lan has set up Tangerine to collect more regular data um, on indicators such as uh, teaching practice, so what a teacher is doing in a classroom, um, and the use of lesson plans. Now, for these two systems to talk to each other, um, they need to use the same unique identifiers for schools, for teachers, and for other records, as a man just discussed. And in doing so, we can link the data on, say, the background of teachers from the annual school census to data uh, on uh, lesson observations uh, from the Tangerine Data Collection app. And in effect, you would have data coming from the two systems that will be tied to the unique identifiers. And in principle, you can use this approach for any type of data. And this could be attendance, it could be for enrollment data, uh, it could be for assessment data and student exams. And with the system in place, a man's now going to uh, kind of talk you through what else we need to do to support data-driven decision-making. So over to you, man. Thanks, Chris. So we have this unified data system, it's been created. There is a single source of truth, but how do we make it sustainable? What support is needed? The main things to think about here are capacity, data collection tools, tools for analysis, and systems to support evidence uptake. So let's start with capacity. Here, capacity is fundamental. Setting up a system is really only one part of the story. It's important to have the right people to carry out the different tasks. People are needed for data collection, organizing and cleaning data, analyzing and synthesizing data, and then actually applying and using the data. So for this to work, clear roles, specifications, and guidelines on who needs what data will be needed at each part of the education ecosystem. And let's not forget the need for ongoing professional development to build this capacity and actually sustain it. Alongside building and sustaining capacity, the right data collection tools are also very important. Currently, the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education have been using different data collection tools, such as Survey CTO for the annual school census and Tangerine for more regular data collection, as Chris mentioned previously. Both of these tools can be used offline on both smartphones and tablets, which are both important features of a data collection tool to be appropriate for the Sierra Leone landscape. And as Chris said, work has already begun to unify and integrate these tools. Now, looking at tools for analysis. It's great to have data available, but if this data is not analyzed and presented in a way that people understand and can relate to, the data will not be used. And as it is important to encourage data use at all levels, the data needs to be presented in such a way that the end users can use it to make decisions. 
This can be done by having tools such as data dashboards to present the data in different ways. The data collected can then be presented in different dashboards for different users. With capacity in place and solid data collection and analysis tools, it's also important that the education ecosystem has a process in place to support evidence uptake. For data-driven decision-making to happen at all levels, it's crucial for systems to be put in place to allow this to happen. Everyone needs to be involved, from teachers to district office staff to directors in the ministry and teaching service commission. There are so many different data users in the education system, and everyone needs to get involved with this. What principals and head teachers need to help their school development will not necessarily be the same data needed by the Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education to produce a new policy. For everyone to get the data they need, it is important to make sure the data is presented back to the users in the best form for them. With this support, the government can create an effective unified data system that covers the needs of all. Now, over to Chris to talk about what factors affect data-driven decision-making in Sierra Leone. Great, and for this question, I'd like to hone in on decision-making at school level. And it was just over a year ago that we worked with the UK aid-funded Levy Lamb program again to look at what factors shape the engagement of school leaders with a tablet-based data management system. And here, one of the things that we were struck by was that there were a number of barriers to program engagement. And these barriers range from time and uh, the uh, additional workload associated with data collection to simply a lack of motivation. And interestingly, a key finding was that a number of school leaders were quite upfront and frank with us uh, insofar as he told us that any time spent on data collection would be a waste if the government um, didn't take action based on this information. So if the government didn't reward um, say good attendance or they didn't sanction uh, absenteeism, then the impact of the program may be limited. And this finding suggested that the program's uh, value appeared to depend on uh, aligning and hinging like decision-making and decision-making structures uh, across different levels of the system. At the same time, and um, to end on a more positive note about the program, um, once principals had accepted the short-term cost of a higher workload, program engagement led to a virtuous cycle of learning and improvement. So school leaders, they would collect the data, they would learn from this information, they would take evidence-based action on this information, and then they would gather more data to assess progress and the cycle would continue. And we found that the cycle was a major motivator uh, for program engagement. And uh, on the topic of data for decision-making, uh, we want to acknowledge and thank all of our partners for the continued collaboration and support. Thanks so much for listening.